Hey, welcome back to The Past is Alive. Hope you guys are all having a good weekend. Tonight we are back with the weekend recap, showcasing some things I picked up over the last couple days, flea market finds and some also some online purchases. We've got some vintage baseball cards that I got yesterday. We'll check those out here in a few minutes. And also an interesting tin that I've never seen before. So we're gonna slash that open and see what is housed in there. But the very first thing I wanna go over is my newest retro toy pickup here on the left side. This King Arthur and the Knights of Justice Boulder Basher. This is a toy line from 92 and 93. It was also a cartoon that I used to really like a lot. And if you guys have followed my channel for a while, you may have seen the video I did about this toy line quite some time ago. But um, this is one of the ones I've been after for quite a while and they don't pop up very often. I think I got this for like 30 bucks. So they're not very expensive, but they can be hard to come by. And now this leaves me with only one left to get for the entire uh, toy line there. And it's Valor the War Horse. He's actually pretty tough to come by. There's one on eBay right now for 95 bucks. But when I used to see him pop up, they used to go for around 30 or 40. So I think I'll hold out and wait till one's a little more reason reasonably priced. Interesting about this too, the slime pit set on here was never actually released. And Mattel, who also made Masters of the Universe, I'm sure a lot of you guys remember that or were fans of he-Man and uh, Masters of the Universe back in the day, but they released the slime pit in 1985. It's the exact same thing pictured on here. So they <laughs> pretty talk about lazy. They never released it for King Arthur, but they were definitely planning on it before they decided to kill off the toy line and the cartoon altogether. So I thought that was pretty interesting that uh, they tried to pass that off as a new toy um, that was, that came out seven years earlier for Motu. But pretty excited to add this to my collection after all these years. So that's the uh, first pickup. Picked it up on eBay last week. And then the next one, some of you guys may be familiar with this. This is a brand new offering from Zero Skateboards. Damn it all. And their brand new DVD. I have not got to watch this yet. I watched a few parts. They were putting them online daily last week. So I saw a few of them. But uh, pretty awesome video so far. Chris Weimer just turned pro last year. He is awesome. Sure, some of you guys may know Jimmy Thomas. Especially if you played like Tony Hawk Pro Skater back in the day. Like most of us did. Then you'll recognize Jimmy Thomas. But uh, from what I saw so far, it looks pretty awesome. with the crack into that here pretty soon. Always liked Zero. Was always a fan. So that was a pickup from over the weekend as well, online purchase. And then I went back to my favorite spot, the Honey Hole, and in the flea market, my favorite baseball card vendor, and picked up some singles here. And uh, thought I got some pretty decent deals. This one is a Don Drysdale 1958 Tops. So it's the second year of Drysdale for only two bucks. I thought that was pretty freaking awesome. It's not in the best shape. It has a small little crease there, but still I thought for a Drysdale second year for two bucks, I could not beat it. And then the next one, the 66 National League RBI leaders, Hank Aaron, Roberto Clemente, and Richie Allen. And this one's in pretty good shape too. So for five bucks, he actually gave me all these cards for 57 bucks, I, I wanna say. So he knocked a few bucks off, but I thought that was a pretty awesome one. And then 73 tops, Goose Gossage rookie card. Not cut the best, but uh, I feel like a lot of these 73 tops, you see that problem with a good bit of them. But still, overall, the corners are pretty sharp on it for the most part. So I have this one already, but uh, I'm going to compare it to the one in my rookie collection and see if it's in better shape. It might be. And the one I was most excited about, this 1961 Roberto Clemente. Uh, tops card. I want to say this was 50 bucks and this one's in pretty good shape overall um, Generally I looked on eBay sold listings. It seems like this card sells between like 35 and 70 bucks or 75 bucks somewhere in that range But um, I don't know. I think this is a pretty good-looking card Centering is pretty good looking on it and whatnot if I feel like if I would send that in it probably get like a five I don't know maybe even a six So I thought that was pretty awesome. I don't normally buy cards these days if they're not rookie cards but uh roberto clemente i can't really pass up on his cards if i see him for a good price i think that's like the fourth or fifth one i have now so it was down between that and the 82 tops ripkin i think he wanted 65 for the 82 tops trade ripkin ripkin i don't have that one so maybe next time i'll pick that up but then i went back to the resale shop after that and you may have refer heard me refer to it before as the junk shop I don't really know what the name of the store is. I don't even know if it has a name, but um, 
I stop in there usually every weekend to see if they have any new boxes of cards, looking for rookies and whatnot. He took me down to his warehouse and let me go through some stuff. Didn't really find anything. There's a lot of boxes of singles, but it was mostly all junk wax, like 88 Fleer, 91 Don Russ, stuff like that. All rookies that I already have and have tons of. So, um, But I, I did dig around a little bit and managed to find a couple nice gems in there. Like I said before, this is a weird, interesting 94 Bowman tin. We're going to rip into that tonight. 94 Bowman, I, I love this set so much. I, I've always liked this set. Um, I love Bowman in general, but like from 89 until like 2000. Uh, I love every single year of Bowman. Obviously, I stopped collecting in like 97 or 98. But uh, all the other years, like 93 Bowman, even 92, like oh, they're, they're all awesome. They all house awesome rookies. So 94, no, no real Hall of Fame rookie cards in there, but there's there are some star rookies. Like you have Wagner in there, you have Jorge Posada, Torrey Hunter, Edgar Renteria. And 94 Bowman was actually, I want to say, the very first box of cards that I bought when I got back into the hobby like five years ago or whatever. Like I just decided to buy a box on eBay for like 25 bucks, somewhere around there, and just ripped them open and had a great time, found a bunch of rookies I didn't have. So this this set definitely um, is very dear to me. So I was pretty excited to find that. And then also 97 Tops factory sealed the, the entire set, series one and two. Pretty small set for Tops there, 495 cards. But uh, both of these... I took them back to the store and the guy was like, how about 10 bucks for both of them? And I was like, I'll give you 15 bucks for both of them. I think that's a decent product. I don't, I don't know what these usually sell for. And I looked on eBay and I see that they can sell for upwards of like 50 bucks. So that was pretty cool. I'm going to keep this one sealed. Um, I don't know. Keep that one sealed for the time being. And then this we're going to rip into tonight. And I looked on eBay for these too to find out a little more about them. There's only two on there. None sold listings. One was listed at like 20 bucks. And then one was listed at 100. So, but uh, not real valuable cards or anything, but pretty cool. And you see here, 12. You also you get 108 Bowman cards, and then also you get 12 special etch foil subset cards. Which I'm pretty sure I know what those are. Um, I want to say there's like a second year Jeter um, in, that, in that foil subset. So that's pretty cool. Maybe we'll see that. And also seven Bowman's best cards. I love Bowman's best from 94, 95. So uh, maybe we'll get some nice rookies out of that. But Enough yapping out of me. Let's go ahead and, and rip into this tin and see what we have in here. Pretty eager to do this. Get my knife here. I guess I don't even need it. It pops right off. This thing is obviously caked in dust. So let's see if these are even protected. Oh, that's pretty cool. Well, we have packs in here. Wow, that's pretty awesome. I was I did not expect packs. Wow. These are like these are 94 Bowman fat packs. That is freaking awesome. I just expected it to be like the newer like hanger boxes that have like what 100 cards in them. That is really awesome. And then we have a pack of Bowman's best from 94. Seven cards in there. That is freaking awesome. Wow. Not did not expect that at all whatsoever. Pretty freaking awesome. I guess we'll start ripping into these 94 Bowman packs. I don't know if I've ever seen the jumbo packs like these. Like I said, box of these are pretty cheap. But there's still some cool rookies you can find in here. So maybe we'll see some. And uh was worried they'd be stuck together, but they are not, as you can see here. They are all flipped around every which way. But I like the design of these. Definitely pretty unique for that time. Very cool. And the very first one we have Greg Swindell. <laughs> Never fails. So here's some of those foil subset cards. No one really prominent yet. But I thought these are pretty cool looking too. John Burke. There's a Smoltz. Move on. Kind of a dud first pack. But that's weird that the uh, tin didn't say, like, you know, several packs of these. Just said 108 cards. Let me believe they're just wrapped in, like, cellophane just randomly. So that's pretty awesome. 
David Cohn, Dave Winfield. Very surprised these aren't stuck together considering the atmosphere that they were stored in for quite some time. There's the foil cards, Tyler Green, Jeff Conine, but those are really cool looking. Dante Bichette. So, another dud pack there for the most part. But it's still fun to go through these. Flip there which way. I'd like to pull a Jorge Posada rookie, that'd be nice. Definitely pulled out of a pack when I was a little kid. Derek Lee rookie card is also in here. There's a nice one as well. Apollo Duca can be found in this set. Jay Buhner, Don Slot, and what is this? Can't say I've ever seen it's a different back to that one, right? Compared to the other foil subset cards. Pretty cool. Donnie Baseball though. Not sure if I've ever seen that one or not. Very nice looking card. And here's our first rookie. Nice. Paul LaDuca. That's pretty awesome. I actually bought that at a flea market, I don't know, maybe six months ago for a couple bucks. But definitely one that I didn't have until last year. So pretty awesome. I want to say he owns like a pizza shop now or something like that. Sosa, Carlos Delgado, Ozzy Smith, David Justice, and Delano De Shields. Not a bad third pack in. We got three more left. Maybe we'll find a refractor in the 94 Bones Best Pack. That'd be pretty freaking awesome. If you guys remember the uh, 94 Bones Best Break we did a few months ago and found the Griffey refractor? That was an awesome surprise. Aaron Seeley. And our second rookie shows up. Nice. If I can get this card unstuck. Hard to read the names. Um, Edgar Renteria rookie card. Another nice one. I think I have that one too, but still, always fun to pull these rookies out of packs. Drabeck and Pedro J. Martinez. Another nice one there. Bob Hamlin. And who do we have here? Steve Carse and a nice Sandberg foil card. Coleman. I'm hoping for that Passada because I think the one I have is like beat up, obviously, from not taking care of it as a kid. And Barry Larkin, final one in that pack. Two packs left. Eric Davis leading off. Glavin. Somebody's kind of stuck a little bit. Is that Brett Butler? Kenny Rogers, Roberto Mejia, and Brian Link, Tim Clark, Rondell White, Joe Carter, Sean Estes, and here's a nice Ripken, like that one, and Eddie Murray. Franco and Rob Ventura. One more pack of Bowman left before we go into the Bowman's best. Jim Abbott leading off. Hoping for a Jorge Posada rookie in here. Mark Newfield again. Checklist. Nice to find a Jeter. Second year in here as well. That'd be pretty sweet. Bubba Smith and a Delgado foil card. Not a bad one. And here's Jason Ischringhausen rookie card. Not too bad of a card either. I actually just bought that for my PC not that long ago. Not a lot of value to it, but uh, a couple bucks. Chris Sabo. <laughs> Looking very uncomfortably awkward. Ah, oh, Chris. We love you, man. We love you. Larry Walker, so two of the omens of the channel show up in what, just five or six packs. Some a decent stack of cards there, a couple decent rookies. And let's check out this Bones Best Pack. I'm excited about this. Box of these are getting tougher and tougher to find, and they're getting more and more expensive. But same rookies we're looking for in here. I see Rogers Daniel on the back. Jeez, come on. 
Pocket on top, not a bad one. Very nice looking cards overall. Very shiny, nice design. I like these a lot. But nice pocket. Sheffield, could it be Refractor? It is not. But the uh, rookies and prospects always have the blue background and the veterans um, on the, the red background. And could this be a Posada rookie? It's a Frank Thomas and Dimitri Young. Not bad, Johnny Damon. No refractor in here, but still cool, nonetheless. Dimitri Young again, and there's Roger Cedeno. So pretty sweet, though. Not a bad value, I don't think. 750 for that 10 and, and for the top set. Both of those for Team Bucks. I thought it was a pretty good deal. But uh, that's really all I picked up this weekend. Nothing too crazy, but still some fun stuff regardless. Let me know down below in the comments what you like the best. And um, I'll see you guys all next time. Thank you for watching.